Hi boardies, as you might have noticed, I'm in a studio here. I'm not playing at uh, the normal place where I record weighing of games. But interestingly, where I am at 769 grams, it is exactly the same set of scales, I believe, as what I use. So today I'm looking at a game, apart from this doesn't turn off the way I turn it off, is the game Hermetica. This is a game with a bit of a Greek theme to it, although the rule book does not state that. And it's found on Kickstarter. So this came out on Kickstarter a couple of years ago. I'm just taking out the rules there. It's a neoprene mat. You may have seen other videos involving neoprene mats, such as this game there. So this is placed out. As you can see, it's kind of in shot, but it'll work for our process and performance. And if you're watching on Facebook or Instagram, please ensure that you switch over to YouTube as you're only seeing the first minute. Now, that goes away, so it's a nice little uh, click box. So it's a two-player abstract game and involves some interesting themes whereby you have the sun, I think, and the moon. And by all means, check out the links and descriptions on uh, YouTube. By all means, please comment and comment in YouTube compared to anywhere else, just to ensure everyone else can keep an eye on it. So you're aiming to get to your opponent's other side. There is a dawn phase, which is basically these have a certain layout. But for now, I'm just going to do it randomly. It's kind of a draft to decide who wants to place how which. You take it in turns. But what you can do is just lay these out as you wish in turn order. And it's a blocking thing. So a bit like chess to a degree, you're trying to get to your opponent's sides. So we have, this is basically representing the different elements. So you have fire, so you'd have white and you have black. They are double-sided, but actually you just use one side. So those would go like that. You'd also have green. And these different pieces all have different abilities. So depending on what you want to do, similar to a chess game, you might choose to have something which is a bit like a rook to do certain things. You can see that those are the whites. And Niall is next to me. I can just uh, hit just about here and breathing. So you can tell him <laughs> that he's here. And, and uh, so he played like dark, I played light earlier. So again, I've got white here, and then you've got black here. I do recommend having them just off the table, just so you can see what you've deployed. So speaking about deployment, you have at most three actions. Initially, you're gonna place out your piece here, which represents your piece called the adept. What the adept represents is ultimately what you're trying to do. You're trying to get your piece, which is just your adept piece across, and reach your home zone of your opponent. You also have some cards here, which gives you a bit of a reference. So I'll leave them kind of just out of shot, but you give you a bit of indication that if you want to check the rules, that's what you can look into. So what can you do? Well, you can move your adept up to two places like this. And what you can use is your shield, which you can deploy next to you. I'll come on to why you might want to use a shield, but as an example, that is something you can do. Additionally, let's move on to fire. So what can a fire do? It can move. So first you can deploy. It's going to cost you two actions and you can't move it the same turn as when you deploy it. So you have to wait until another round to move it. It moves up to four spaces. Now it can shoot. So if one of your opponent's piece was here, you could shoot it. It hits it. What happens? It comes off and it's been captured. It'll never come back into the game. So that's what firing and using fire does. Fire, shoot, fire, seems to make sense. A water piece. So what a water piece can do is move some of these walls. They're also known as barriers, and I think there are some issues I have with the rule book on how it's laid out and how you explain it, and how it just jumps from straight into what these things do without telling you that you have different kinds of pieces. So water, once it's been deployed, again, a future turn, it goes as far as it reaches something, including an opponent's unit, maybe a barrier, maybe a piece of wall, and it hits it, and suddenly it can relocate it, and it could go here. It could make space for my depths to get through. It could land on an opponent's piece, again, capturing it, and now they're down to fewer pieces. So that's something a water tile can do. So finally, we have the earth piece. It can move fewer spaces again. It can move three. So again, as much as you like until it hits something. This is barrier. Can't go here. And what this does, up to three, and it can push and capture something. So hit something, and the capture unit collides with a barrier. So it might hit something here, 
maybe you know the opponent's water tile and you can say i'm going to chuck it here crushing it let's say again it can come off so that is earth and also what you can do is you can use your other pieces such as your shield so you can push your friendly shield around and that can then be of use as well so with the shield and the earth again we well, could be using a friendly uh, shield let's say it's here i'll come on to how it could become there as if it was a unit so then i could do something to move it around and capture something there so when this moves, either before it moves, during its move, or after its move, it can deploy its shield. So again, that can be where it can be interacting with other pieces. This can only move on empty hexes, so you could move yours here to block your opponent's obviously adept from getting through and reaching your home zone to win the game. Additionally, you could have other effects for it too, and from then on, it's going to be redeployed if you want to then move it around. Again, you could be using your elements to move instead. So again, you can move this uh, at any two, up to two pieces. And again, you can deploy a shield onto adjacent hex. You have your various different elements that you can choose to say, right, my first move, I might move this out. From now on, I might choose to lay out these pieces. Throughout the game, this piece can never be captured. That can never be captured. So you already have, um, you already start the game with three elemental choice uh, units of their choice. And again, your turn consists of three actions, which is a may consist of three actions to either move units or spawn additional ones. So again, you could spawn and move, but it can't be the same piece that you've just spawned. So you need to navigate your adept to the other player's horizon, that's what this is called. And again, the first player to do so is the winner. So this game came out on Kickstarter a couple of years ago, actually 2017 officially. And um, again, there's a certain scheme, it's called the Dawn Scheme. So as you imagine, it is kind of symmetrical. And again, the uh, it's interesting in the sense that these, these are good weight pieces. You definitely have a little bit of feel of weight to them. Not too heavy, but a little to them, the enamel pieces. Um, in terms of what you're trying to do, again, it, it kind of makes sense. I think it'll appeal to people who realize sometimes you need to push pieces around to get past them. Uh, you need to be aware of your conscious decisions of what is reactive. You know, right now I might feel I want to bring out a blue, start making some space, making it harder for the opponents. Maybe I'll start getting some fire out to actually clear the space so they can't then push something back. And maybe I want green to actually, you know, get something to get something out of the way again. So what you want to do it really does vary. But depending on where you want to go, you might not want to lose certain pieces earlier on. So in terms of gameplay, it says about 35 minutes. I think it's taken a little less than that for the first play. But ultimately you have three different types of pieces you can move, but be aware that obviously this is trying to reach here. So you could try and block by putting pieces there and leaving them there, in which case you're bringing the rest of your army in to help wipe them out. And of course doing so without letting this get past. So lots of things to consider. And in terms of a rating, I would say maybe, I think compared to what I've enjoyed from other games, knowing that you've got to be slightly aware of what these pieces are, a kind of a 6.5. It's, I like the idea that you're moving across. I like the fact that you have these pieces that give you different abilities. It's clear enough, but I think there's some uh, decisions and even though they have an FAQ at the back and I kind of covered off some of them as I explained of what you can do with things, uh, I feel that the rule book could be slightly better. And I do feel that there is um, an example of better game out there or better games. And it appeals to those abstract gamers out there, knowing that, you know, each decision you make, you know, it could be different and unique. And knowing that you're obviously countering a threat and varying what you're doing to someone else. But obviously, hopefully this gives you a little indication that this piece is trying to reach there. So very linear in that kind of idea, you know, that's your ultimate goal, using pieces to protect you, using your shields to sort of, you know, block things, maybe as a way of capturing, and the fact that obviously various different pieces can allow these to move. Fire to fire, again, it works quite well. Water doesn't destroy anything necessarily, or at least uh, on its own. So I think that's of interest too. And yeah. It uh, only works if it hits a barrier. So this is trying to hit things like this. It does feel similar to some of the other games, whereby 
like in a labyrinth, you're trying to move things around and maybe use that to the negative effect on your opponent. But this is Hermetica. So thank you very much for watching. If you haven't already, uh, hit the like button to show me this is what you're interested in. And obviously subscribe to catch more stuff. And finally, again, check the comments, check the descriptions, and I'll see what I can do to update you. Thanks very much, and I look forward to speaking to you again on another one very soon. Bye for now.